afternoon, New South Wales Productivity Commissioner Peter Arkestrat. Welcome to Digital Dialogue. Well, thank you very much for the invitation to talk, Adam. And look, thank you to the Western Sydney Dialogue for the leadership you've taken in policy development uh, um, and also the way you've been able to champion the opportunities and resources, uh, wonderful resources we've got here in Western Sydney. Thanks, Peter. It's very kind. Um, I mean, there's no better time to be talking productivity at the moment. Um, coming out of a, or soon to be coming out of a, a pandemic. Um, you've been actively involved in sort of looking at productivity um, in, across the state. Um, and obviously we want to talk about Western Sydney specifically today, but talk us through the process, the steps that you've gotten with the Green Paper uh, released last year, the feedback you sought from Western Sydney um, to the, the finalisation, the white paper that came out earlier this year, which put a number of recommendations on how we can boost productivity and jobs growth in the region. Great. Thank, thanks, Adam. And I guess um, you've mentioned um, the opportunities at the moment with the, the COVID, etc. cetera, uh, cyclical issues on productivity, but there are more important structural issues on productivity. So even before the pandemic arose, uh, productivity was falling. So in New South Wales, traditionally, uh, over the last 40 years, productivity has improved every year. So more goods and services were made per person in any year than the year before. But over the last five years, even before COVID, the level of productivity slowed. And in fact, the year before COVID, productivity went backwards. There were less goods and services produced per person in New South Wales than the year before. And if there's less goods and services per person, that puts downward pressure on real wages and it puts downward pressure on living standards. So that's why the New South Wales government established the Productivity Commission and asked us to produce a white paper. You asked uh, in relation to the process, well, one option we could have done was to come up with our own ideas in the white paper, our ideas that have just come from the bureaucracy, but I didn't want to do that. So we did a two-stage approach. We issued a green paper with draft ideas uh, and we asked the public to comment on that. We went out to various places, went out to Liverpool, hosted us, the uh, West Rock Councils and the West, West New Sydney University. We got ideas on the draft recommendations in the Green Paper. And we in fact had over 3 million people visited the Green Paper on our website or our social media. So we got a lot of feedback. And then we took that feedback into account and produced the white paper with 60 specific recommendations. Yeah, I mean, th there are a lot of recommendations. And I mean, we've spoken about in Western Sydney uh, for a long time you know, in terms of the, the economy that's largely been largely infrastructure driven and, and a services economy. But some of the things that are, you know, like you're saying, you know, you put forward in this report are go to that structural heart of how we can, you know, create new smart jobs and take a more innovative approach to, you know, education, skills development, et cetera. Are there some in there that you, you've, you've been sort of quite surprised by in terms of how they impact Western Sydney? specifically? Well, look, one of the things that I, was, um, I wasn't surprised with that I was heartened is the actual high level of skills available uh, in Western Sydney. Now, I know um, when I was the Auditor General, the um, Western Sydney University kindly used to ask me to talk at their graduations, the uh, occasional addresses. And uh, I spoke, used to speak at the Bachelor of Commerce uh, graduations. And that was one of the ways we used to re be able to recruit really first class graduates straight out of the Western Sydney University. Uh, but what we found is that well, while we're looking at the university and higher education, there was also a, a shortage of people in the trades. Uh, we found there's a shortage of a number of trades throughout Sydney and Western Sydney is no different. And in fact, the regions is even worse. A big shortage of air conditioning mechanics, a big shortage of chefs, a real shortage, right? So uh, a lot of our recommendations go to uh, improving not just school education, but also vocational. Mm. Yeah, I mean, addressing that that skills gap is, is an important consideration. Obviously, there's there's a lot of talent in Western Sydney. Um, Sixty recommendations, not all of them um, are going to be adopted. Uh, what's been the response back from government on on how they actually action some of these these suggestions? A great question, thanks, Adam. Uh, and in fact, um, over twenty of the sixty have been accepted already by government. Right. You're right. There are a few that we I've really pushed the envelope on, which uh, may may not be accepted. Uh, I'll have to keep working on those ones. But those that have been accepted, I guess, focus mainly on skills and development. Uh, the um, white paper has, I guess, uh, the main theme of the white paper is asset utilisation, using our existing assets better. 
Uh, others in the past, governments have looked at um, recycling assets uh, to use uh, the ex assets differently, but we're talking about utilising existing assets better, whether they be physical assets, as you've mentioned, uh, infrastructure, human assets, or even intangible assets, uh, information, etc. Uh, and the government has accepted um, recommendations in relation to our education, uh, fast tracking uh, teachers into the uh, to the mathematics and, and STEM areas. Uh, they've also accepted some of our recommendations in relation to planning, which is an issue for the Western Sydney because of the um, the, the housing prices are just going up. Um, everyone wants to live, you know, close by where their parents are, and Western Sydney uh, land prices and, and property prices are going up. So, our recommendations uh, to try to increase the supply uh, of housing. Mm. I mean, you, you mentioned earlier that this is you know, at the core of it trying to address some of the, the structural issues around driving productivity um, but I mean obviously COVID the COVID lens has shifted a lot of things um, across the board not just in Sydney but across the world uh, obviously this report was released earlier in the year um, things have changed probably a little bit since then in terms of the economy um, you know jobs growth uh, forecasts around population movement work from home trends social behavior uh, how do you think those things will sort of be reflected or connect to this report? Does the report need to, does there, is there another piece of work now that addresses some of it, or do you think that it's just going to have to, you know, respond uh, as we go? Well, very good point, Adam. And after the Green Paper was, was released, um, the feedback we got from people was very COVID-related. Uh, one of the recommendations we've got in there is that of the, um, when the New South Wales government relaxed a lot of regulations during COVID, for example, allowing electronic signatures, allowing virtual meetings of strata, allowing delivery of um, toilet paper at three o'clock uh, in, the, in the evenings, um, a lot of those recommendations, those relaxations of um, the regulation during COVID were due to lapse. And a group of people would say, Productivity Commission, you've got to prove which ones of those relaxation should continue. I put a recommendation up to government flipping that, saying they all should continue unless someone can prove why they shouldn't. Uh, and government has largely accepted that in relation to many of the recommendations to say, well, they're going to continue the relaxation unless someone can prove why we need to bring it back. The other one is you, you've quite rightly mentioned during COVID, um, with, with apprentices, uh, a number of apprentices uh, were unable to keep physically on their job, they lose their job. We recommended that they should still be able to do the uh, TAFE side of it, even if they don't uh, can't physically go um, uh, to the work site. Uh, and that was, uh, uh, that's been, we had very positive responses on that. So, and thirdly, one of the main reasons we do need to improve productivity is because governments across the world, and we're no different, have had to borrow money uh, to um, keep the economy afloat. Uh, the governments have given um, uh, support to various areas. Now, that's, that money's got to be paid back. Uh, and one way we can do it, I believe, uh, is increasing uh, productivity and incomes of everybody so that we don't necessarily have to have this long-term debt overhanging the government. What's next for you, Peter? I mean, obviously, you've put a lot of work in, into this report. And like you're saying, quite rightly, the, the, the level of engagement and consultation that you, you guys have adopted on this has been first class. I don't think there's been a, a, a strategy that's come out in more in recent times that's been more consultative than, than the effort that you guys have put into making sure that, you know, the, the key players in industry um, the region and, and all the other sectors are involved in it. So well done on that. But what happens next for you? Oh, thanks, Adam. I guess there's three things that are happening. First is on the recommendations which have been accepted by government, I want to work with the various agencies which are implementing them uh, to, to make sure we can fast track them, whether it be infrastructure contributions reform or whatever. Secondly, the recommendations which have um, not been accepted yet, um, hopefully they some of them will be, maybe not exactly as we've said, uh, but maybe a modified version. I'll be working with the secretaries of departments to see if we can't tweak those. But thirdly, uh, what's been happening, uh, Adam, is that other people have given completely new ideas and said, look, here are some other areas where you should look at. Uh, and uh, we've been very heartened by these new ideas which people are putting forward to enhance productivity and we'll be uh, progressing a number of those. 
Well, Peter, you're a very persuasive man, so I'm sure you'll have no no issue trying to get some of those other recommendations over the line. Uh, thank you for your time this afternoon. Thank you for all the effort and work you've put into this report, um, and uh, we look forward to hearing more about it over the coming months and years. Absolute pleasure. Thank you very much, uh, Adam, and the Western Sydney Dialogue. Thank you. <music>